Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have big circles. These large ancient stone spheres were found by archaeologists in Jordan, and they have been the cause of confusion for many ever since. These stones were dated back to around 2,000 years ago, and so far about 11 or 12 of them have been found. These stone structures are nearly circular, and they range in size from 720 feet to 1,200 feet in diameter. There aren't any purposefully placed holes in the stones, so it isn't believed that they were used for either humans or animals to walk through. So what are they? Well, no one is exactly sure, to be honest. Researchers are trying to compare these structures to other similar ones in an attempt to find an answer to that question. But so far, only mysteries remain. In our number nine spot today, we have Puma Punku. This site is located in Bolivia, and it boasts a series of stone structures. One of the most notable and remarkable things about this site is how precisely the stones here were cut. It is believed that this site dates back to somewhere around 536 AD, and while it now lay in ruins, it is thought to have once been an incredibly wondrous place filled with things like polished metal plaques, bright ceramics, and different fabrics. It isn't quite known exactly what this site was used for entirely, partly because of its age, but also because of the lack of written record and the deterioration that can be seen on the site. Because of the impressive size of the site, as well as the technology that was used to build it, this is a place that many people often say was built by aliens, but it was actually the Incas. They were incredibly talented craftsmen, and just because we couldn't pull it off today doesn't mean that we should take their credit away. In our number eight spot today, we have Stonehenge. This prehistoric monument is located in England, and it is a set of stones that are oriented towards the sunrise on the summer solstice. This stone monument is thought to have been created somewhere from 3000 to 2000 BC, and it truly is one of the most famous landmarks ever. Stonehenge is thought to have been an ancient burial ground right from early in its creation for somewhere around 500 years. There are many theories surrounding this incredible monument regarding who could have created it, as experts just aren't quite sure. Since this is from a time before we had written records, we may never know for sure. Maybe this one is just destined to stay a mystery. In our number seven spot today, we have the face on Mars. In 1976, as the NASA Viking orbiter was flying through space time, it spotted what really appeared as a face on the surface of Mars. This face is nearly two miles long, and it is located within the smooth plains of northern Mars. This was striking because, like I mentioned, northern Mars is more smooth plains, while the southern area is where the cratered land can be found, but also because it's a huge face that looks like it's coming out of the planet. While it has been said that this face on Mars is actually just some sort of tabletop mountain, I prefer to take some liberties with that story. I'm just saying, out of everything on this list today, this one has got to be alien made. In our number six spot today, we have Machu Picchu. This incredible and stunning site was built over 500 years ago, and it was once known as the lost city of the Inca. Our modern discovery of this site came in 1911 when the archaeologist Hiram Bingham and his team stumbled upon it almost accidentally while looking for another ancient city. Of course, this site was not built by aliens and instead was built by the incredible Incas. People often refer to this as a place that may have been built by aliens because of the fact that the Incas were so ahead of their time in their ability to create absolutely amazing things, and because of the fact that all these years later, Machu Picchu is still standing. The stones used to create this site weighed over 50 tons, and it certainly doesn't have a location that would have been convenient to its construction. Through earthquakes and all of the terrible weather that Earth has seen in the last 500 years, Machu Picchu remains, and that is a testament to how brilliant their work really was. Another reason many people talk about this site being built by aliens is because of the elongated skulls that were found nearby, but guess what? This was actually a sign of royalty for the Incas, so maybe we should think twice about what we say when in the presence of royalty. And we should definitely be giving credit to them and all of the people who once took part in building this place, because we certainly couldn't do it today, what they did in the 15th century. In our number five spot today, we have the works of old men. The works of old men are structures that were first observed from the air by a British pilot in 1927, and they are located near the Azraq Oasis in Jordan. There are hundreds of these wheel-like structures 
structures that are each over 80 feet wide, some even as large as 200 feet. These huge structures have been dated back so far that they just might be the oldest man-made creations that we have ever found. While this is all amazing, we have absolutely no idea what they are or why they were created. The theories range from things like sun tracking to ceremonies to some sort of spiritual relevance, but we just aren't really sure. While things like this are incredible finds and it's amazing that some of the first man-made things still exist on our earth, it's insane that we have no idea what they are or how to use them. And unfortunately, because of the fact that it's been thousands and thousands of years, it's most likely that the mysteries surrounding them are totally lost with the past. In our number four spot today, we have Saxe Huamen. This site is located in Cusco, Peru, and it is another fascinating and seemingly impossible stone structure that was built by the Incas. This structure was once believed to have been a fortress, but now it is believed it may have actually been used for things like ceremonies. Why this is another incredible creation is because of the fact that we can't quite figure out how it could have been built. The stones in the structure fit together so perfectly that they're able to stay together without anything holding them in place, and they've done so for years and years. This, coupled with how large some of the stones were, is enough to completely stump experts. Despite how well the stones all fit together, apparently Apparently they all have different shapes, which has led researchers to believe that the building design was kind of made up as the structure was being built. Imagine that. Improving building a structure and it lasts for hundreds and hundreds of years and goes on to stump humanity for a while. I'm just saying. It's pretty cool. It becomes more and more apparent how talented and brilliant the Incas really were. In our number three spot today, we have the Nazca Lines. If you were to head to the Nazca Desert, just about 200 miles southeast of Lima in southern Peru, you'd find the most famous geoglyphs in the world the Nazca Lines. Researchers believe that these lines might be something like two millennia old, and other than how they are incredible works of art, these often get referred to as a possible site of alien visitation because it just seems like making these should have been impossible 2,000 years ago. The geoglyphs are more than 800 foot long white lines etched into the desert, as well as 300 geometric shapes and 70 different animal figures. The biggest shape stretches around 1,200 feet across Cross, which leads to my point about why these lines are so incredibly fascinating. These images can only be fully seen from high above in the air, so thinking back 2,000 years ago, how did humans make these without the vantage points we have now? I'm not exactly sure, but it definitely is nothing shy of amazing. In our number two spot today, we have the Yonaguni Monument. Just off of the coast of Yonaguni in Japan, there is a diving location that was first discovered in 1986 by a diver. He noticed some strange sort of formation that was located on the seabed that looked as if it could be some sort of structure, so he swam down to go investigate. When he went down and didn't find any more answers to his question, he of course had to spill the tea on what he had stumbled upon. When researchers heard about this, they ended up diving down to check out what this formation could be, and thus, the Yonaguni Monument was considered officially discovered. This monument, which kind of resembles stairs made for giants, is made of sandstone and limestone, but there's one super mysterious thing about it. Experts cannot agree on the origins of this thing. Some people believe it was a naturally occurring formation, while others swear it was man, or perhaps alien made. The Yonaguni Monument is at least 10,000 years old, so at the end of the day, anyone's guess is as good as mine. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments how you think the Yonaguni Monument came to be. In our number one spot today, we have Gobekli Tepe. This is a pre-pottery Neolithic archeological site that is located in Turkey. This site has been dated back all the way to somewhere from 9,500 to 8,000 BC, making it the world's oldest known megalith, which is truly just incredible. This site is comprised of a bunch of large circular structures that are being supported by massive stone pillars many of which are decorated with abstract anthropomorphic details and things which has provided rare and valuable insight into prehistoric religion and the iconography of the times when this was built. One of the most amazing things about this area is that it was first used at the beginning of the Neolithic period, which marks the oldest human settlements anywhere in the world. It has been called the world's first temple and it was used by groups of nomadic hunter-gatherers from a wide area. Without a doubt, this was one of the best archaeological logical finds our modern society has ever had as it gives us just a glimpse into what life was like in prehistoric times. <laughs> 
A 30-second video from Jharkhand is going viral all over the internet. In the video, a strange, eerie-looking human figure can be seen strolling down the road. The video was apparently recorded on the Chhadwa Dam bridge in the Hazaribagh district by some bikers. Seeing that, some are saying that it is an alien and some are claiming it to be a ghost. After the appearance, there has been a war on the social media sites among the people to determine the exact type of supernatural being that the creature is. Maybe it's a ghost alien. Maybe it's a ghost and an alien. A ghost alien. Why is it so creepy? Like, it's so lanky and weird. But at the same time, I feel like aliens are more stealthy than that, you know? Like, I feel like it wouldn't just be walking like, oh, da -da -da -da, hey, yo, what's up? You know, like just for everyone to see. They've been stealthy and hiding themselves for years, potentially, uh, on Earth. So why would they just reveal themselves now? It doesn't really make sense. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe, maybe he's just, he's just not a good alien. Maybe that's what it is. But it's really creepy. Like, it's, it was, legs were so, Skinny, like that did not look like a human. That looked like a creature of some sort. Ugh. Also, alien, if you're watching this video, just kidding. You're beautiful. Love you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh. What the hell? That strange light in the sky is one of 1,100 UFO sightings in Canada last year. According to the annual survey released by Ufology Research of Manitoba, there are at least three such sightings in the country every day. UFO reports are still a thing. People are reporting them in greater and greater numbers every year. I'm never going to BC. It's beautiful there. And I was like, I want to go this summer. Yeah. Three sightings of UFOs per day. Yeah, that's where they're hiding. They're hiding in the wilderness there. Them and, and the Bigfoot, they're just hiding there together. Or maybe that was Bigfoot roaming through the forest shining his flashlight. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it's not even an alien after all. Maybe it's Bigfoot. <laughs> just about quarter to five and take a look at this viral video from La Junta in southeastern Colorado. All right, Vivian Gomez wrote on Facebook that her security camera captured this on Sunday morning. There are people on Facebook who say it looks like Dobby from Harry Potter or a ghost or an alien or a kid in flip-flops and underwear. Maybe that. Maybe it's a kid in flip-flops and underwear like na 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 na. I can't see an alien doing the chicken dance. It has to be a kid. Come on. But also it does look like Dobby. It's not Dobby. Dobby. Why did, I feel like she said it weird. Anyways, it does look like Dobby from Harry Potter. That is a house elf for sure, okay? He was like, Harry Potter must not come to Hogwarts. Bad Dobby, bad Dobby. And then that was him leaving after the cake got. If you know Harry Potter, then you know. What the hell is that? Ew. Oh, I literally got the sh the, sh the shills. <laughs> I literally got the chills watching that. Like this alien was trying to be stealthy and hide behind some tombstones, but it wasn't working. Look at its head. That is massive. That's a massive alien head. That is terrifying. That is, that's, that's like the creature from Predator. I'm sorry. I don't like that thing at all. That cemetery needs to be burned down. I, it, no, just no. <laughs> That is for sure a UFO. Like that literally looks like a spacecraft. Either that or it's Ron and Harry going to Hogwarts in their flying car. <laughs> That's also what it looks like. Man, we got the freaking house elf and now we got, like this is just confirmation that Hogwarts is real. Hogwarts is real, man. Yo, wizard Harry. Yo, wizard Lindsay. I wish I was. Lala Kadabra. Lindsay Porter. <laughs> Oh 
That is an alien. That's an alien. Either that or someone is really good at special effects and has a really expensive alien costume. Because it doesn't really make sense to me. Wouldn't an alien like be like, oh snap, there's a human or something and make them forget? You know, like the men in black, how they have the little flashy light. I feel like an alien just like points at you and then you forget that you saw an alien. Wouldn't you think, like this is just too casual, him just, oh hey what's up, yeah, you can videotape me. Make sure you get this angle. Yeah, I'll just do my slow model walk. You know, like it doesn't make sense to me. Also, this alien looks like the one from Scooby Doo. It's with the green humanoid head. That's eh. it's Scooby Doo. Anyway. Got this video from one of our viewers, Mash Hatai. He said he woke up at about 2:30 this morning, get a drink of water, and this is what he saw in the sky. Certainly caught his eye. He took the video from Kakaako and thinks the lights were over central or west Oahu. Hard to tell from his vantage point. As you can see, the two bright lights, and then slowly a third light appears. Hatai believes he saw about eight to ten of the lights total. What the hell? Guys, aliens might be real, and I, it's scary to say that out loud. How else do you explain this? Like, also, let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a creepy alien encounter, because now I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. Something is in the sky. What is that? This video was taken by Missy Tina Sape at 8.26 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanakuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. I don't know what it looked like. And then I was like, oh, I started calling my husband because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, turn up up there. Let's see what I see. The 38-year-old yeah. says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue object had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. Oh my god, do the aliens live in the ocean? Like, was it just returning home? Maybe that's why we haven't found them? Because they store their spacecraft underwater, in the depths, in Mariana's Trench. Love that band. But like, in the depths, down there, that's where the aliens are hiding, where we can't go. Wow, maybe that's where they are. Also, they are brave for following this. They're like, yeah, let's just get in the car and follow this potential UFO that could kill us. Yeah, let's just do it. Typical Tuesday. Now it is darkened outside. Temperatures are sitting at 61 in Buffalo. We have a northerly wind at 7. Good sleeping weather tonight, folks. Uh, you, what was that? Did anybody see that thing go past? Did we just see a shooting star? Good sleeping weather tonight, folks. Uh, you, what eh. was that? Did anybody see that thing? Eh. Nothing impressive compared to the other ones. That was probably just a shooting star. This guy was just trying to hype it up. He's like, how can I make the news more interesting? Whoa, did everyone see that? No, that wasn't a piece of my danger flying by the screen. It was actually UFO. So, I'm famous now. I caught it on camera. <laughs> the Pentagon has confirmed a strange and unexpected sight captured by Navy personnel off the coast of California. The video shows flying pyramid shaped objects hovering above the USS Russell and another warship. It was leaked by filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. Uh, he's also shared three images from the USS Omaha showing an unknown spherical craft. The spherical Pentagon craft. has Why did he say it like its that? unidentified <laughs> aerial phenomena task force, what a task force that is, is examining the footage. That guy got really into the story. I think he believes in aliens. He's like, spherical, spherical craft, yeah, aliens. That's literally what he sounded like. The Pentagon revealed that like it was a UFO, but UFO is technically unidentified flying objects. So it doesn't mean that it's an ET, it just means that they don't know what the hell it was. <laughs> Which makes me feel better. So maybe, maybe it's not aliens, maybe it's just like a drone. I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> Navy pilots say they saw something that defies the limits of known aviation technology. They've been popping up around our national security facilities and baffling veteran military personnel. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. And civilians, including commercial airline pilots, are also seeing it. We just had something go right over the top of us. Here's a rendering of what an American Airlines pilot reported. I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top. Okay, that scares me for a number of reasons. Number one, they said that there was a whole bunch of them flying in the sky. Hello? Are aliens trying to invade Earth now? 
Like, why can't we just live side by side in peace? Like, what happened to we come in peace? Like, come on, be a good alien. Number two, what if it's like another country spy, like I read about this, it could be another country spying on us through these craft type things. I don't know, either way it's spooky and, and I'm scared. <laughs> An unidentified aerial phenomenon dropped down on the Florida coast. First thing in the morning we drove to the beach to find it. This is what we saw when we got there. We tried to get closer but the officers on the beach saw us. When we got home this man was at our house. For days we have seen suspicious vehicles in front of our place. If anyone knows what we should do, please let us know. You need to move, that's what you should do. A UFO literally crashed down on the beach by your house. That's time to pack up and leave, okay? And literally they're describing like the men in black coming there and like, oh, so you see any uh, anything suspicious lately? Any uh, ETs, UFOs, let me know. That is scary, seriously. Pack up and get the heck out of there. Again, the, wait, hold up. I think I just put two and two together. I think I just solved this whole alien thing. Again, it crashed down by water. What if this UFO was trying to enter the water? Like I said before, aliens actually live deep down below in the ocean. Again, this kind of proves it, so just saying. Just saying. In our number 10 spot, we have a frozen alien corpse. Scientists have discovered this frozen alien corpse in Russia. It was found by two people in Siberia after claims of a UFO came to Earth. Allegedly, it was missed by the Russian military after they cleaned up the area after the crash. The corpse was pretty damaged, but the being was two feet high and part of his right leg was missing. Also, apparently this particular area in Russia is a hot spot for a UFO sight. Sightings, and there are a number of reports of sightings every single year. In fact, there was a sighting that reported seeing a UFO crash in the area, and so the finding of this alien corpse aligns with that sighting. Whoa, I want to go to Siberia now. If there is anyone watching from Russia, you know, from Siberia, please tell us of any other sightings that you may have come across in the comment section below. In a number nine spot, we have traces of potential alien DNA. Scientists have recently discovered traces of DNA outside some of the Antarctic caves, which could suggest alien life. From algae, DNA, to small animals, there was so much evidence to support the idea that perhaps there once was a lot more living species in Antarctica. They did not come across any animals in the caves at the time, but they still found this to be a great discovery and have reason to believe that they will discover more evidence as they continue their search, where perhaps alien life might be underneath the ice sheets as there are warm temperatures coming from underneath the sheets. And that would suggest that it might be a place they could easily live in. In our number eight spot, we have UFO discovered. That's right, in October of 2020, satellite photos of Antarctica were taken that had many people stop in their tracks. Surrounded by ice and snow and with some ice still on it, we see an object that looks like half of a flying saucer that is also a bit raised, casting a shadow around it. As the ice sheets continue to melt around the world, it is believed that is why it has now been revealed and it is also believed that this is potentially an aircraft from thousands if not millions of years ago. According to experts, Antarctica would be a great place for aliens to go to because of how sterile it is, so it would make sense to land there. Of course, this is all speculation and there's nothing further on this discovery at this time. In our number seven spot, we have the Alaskan alien. On January 3rd, 1989, NASA's Alaska York Station made a great discovery. They found an alien frozen in ice. Yep, an alien, just like you see in the movies with the great big eyes and bald head. Makes you wonder if perhaps the movies are showcasing these creatures the same because we've already discovered aliens and someone somewhere is telling illustrators to paint them a specific way. I wish I was someone that had pulled to know all of this top secret information, although I guess if I was, then I wouldn't be able to make this video as I would probably have a target on my back. There is no other information on this discovery as it is considered top secret, but it is definitely a sign that alien life has been to this planet. In our number six spot, we have alien eggs. In 2015, it was reported that two friends were walking along a frozen lake in Utah when they discovered the most peculiar thing. There was a strange formation in the middle of the lake that honestly gives me shivers to look at. If you are someone that feels uncomfortable looking at a bunch of dots together or 
eyeballs looking at you, definitely look away. This has the same sort of displeasing effect. Small holes were seen poking out from the ice with a strange formation lying underneath them. The theories around what this is include a UFO landing spot, something that aliens left when they visited Earth, and the popular theory is alien eggs. There were some things there that were slimy, so the two friends left them, and that's why people believe them to be eggs. What do you think this is? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number five spot, we have unknown frozen creatures. More frozen creatures in Siberia, you say? Yep, clearly this is an alien breeding ground of some sort. Strange creatures were recently found throughout Siberia. Many of these unknown creatures were found deceased and frozen in huge blocks of ice. There are creatures that have never been discovered, which are believed to be alien, and even a species of dog was discovered that is so old it goes back to 1000 AD. Wow, well, I guess we're all going to have to plan our trip to Siberia, eh? I've always wanted to go on an alien expedition, so this is definitely where I will be going next. In our number four spot, we have Frozen on Mars. Okay, this one is like a little bit of a stretch as this evidence was not found frozen on this planet, but it is evidence of alien life and it was found on Mars. And Mars can get to a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, which is way past freezing. So whatever, imagine that this evidence was found frozen as it could very well have been. I just can't prove that and I wanted to share this anyway. <laughs> In 1976, the Viking Mars landers detected chemical signatures that indicated potential past life on the planet, or perhaps present life. Eh? An experiment mixing soil with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients tested positive, and even though other tests done at the time did not test positive, the original scientists and others that have reanalyzed the data still stand by the original finding there is definitely a possibility of alien life on Mars. In our number three spot, we have aliens in the water. In an interview in 2017, ex-NASA scientist Alan Stern spoke about the theory of alien life underwater frozen. He mentions that aliens are bound to exist and that scientists should focus more on water worlds. When he was asked about why aliens haven't been found to date, he was quoted as saying that there are many possible explanations. The great majority of worlds with biology and civilizations are water ocean worlds. ETs at the bottom of ocean ocean worlds would be protected from the likes of deadly radiation from space if their planet does not have a protective atmosphere like it does here on Earth and exploding stars. He went on to speak about how ocean worlds are usually freezing cold and that these aliens would be living beneath a thick sheet of ice and that is what would make it impossible to contact them. Fascinating. I could totally see this to be true as there's so much of the ocean that we haven't even begun to explore yet. In our number two spot, we have alien fossils from Antarctica. Well, this is a wild one. In 1996, NASA scientists announced that they came upon a meteorite that appeared to be from Mars. A fossilized microbe in a potato shaped lump of Martian rock was how it was described. It is believed that the meteorite was possibly from Mars and blasted off in a collision and wandered the solar system for, you know, approximately 15 million years before coming to Earth and freezing for a little while in Antarctica. After further analysis of the rock, it apparently contained organic molecules and tiny specks of mineral magnetite as well as nanobacteria. There is much debate about whether this fully indicates alien life, but a lot of scientists believe that it does. In our number one spot, we have a frozen ancient civilization. In 2017, there was a whistleblower by the name of Corey Goad, who claimed that it was discovered that an ancient alien civilization is frozen and buried under two miles of ice in Antarctica. Apparently this discovery was made in 1939 by a German expedition, but it was only until 2002 that archeologists and scientists were allowed on the site. Apparently Goad originally only knew about this secret expedition because of a USAF officer working in the program, but eventually Goad himself journeyed to Antarctica with the US Air Force to witness this secret project where they have discovered the ruins of a 55,000 year old alien civilization. Not much more was revealed, but hopefully in the next 10 years we will learn more about these findings. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Meteorite ALH84001. 
1. In 1984, there was the discovery of a meteorite that had landed in Antarctica. This meteorite was a piece of Martian rock that had been blasted off of the surface of the red planet after some sort of collision, and it wandered the solar system for a cool 15 million years before it came hurtling down to Earth to be discovered by scientists. This is already pretty cool, but what's cooler is that in 1996, NASA scientists announced that they had found what appeared to be fossilized microbes in the rock. Analysis of the rock showed that it contained organic molecules and tiny specks of mineral magnetite, which can sometimes be found in the bacteria here on Earth. It was also said that underneath an electron microscope, the scientists found signs of nanobacteria. This piece of evidence has been quite controversial, with some scientists bringing up alternative to these key pieces of evidence. Some experts have argued that the magnetite wasn't actually similar to those found in Earth bacteria, and that the organic molecules were just contaminants from Earth, which is a fair argument. At the end of the day, we aren't exactly sure if this is proof or not, but the good news is that the Perseverance rover on Mars might finally be able to give us the answers to these questions. In our number 9 spot today, we have Dr. Richard Hoover. For around two decades, Dr. Richard Hoover has been studying meteorites that were found in Antarctica, and in 2011, he claimed that he and his team had found evidence of ancient bacteria from colonies that thrived on comets, moons, and other planets. The astrobiologist said that they were able to make this discovery through the use of the most advanced microscanning technology in the entire world. Dr. Hoover sliced open these meteorites and discovered what they called remains of cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae. This type of algae is said to have a unique quality and the ability to thrive even in some of the most harshest conditions, which is necessary when talking about surviving the extreme environment some other planets hold, as well as just space in general. Dr. Hoover said that while some of the bacteria he had found was similar to those on Earth, he said that some of the others were completely alien. He said, quote, Neither I nor other experts who have seen the evidence have any idea what these creatures might be. I do believe these findings indicate that life is not restricted to Earth, but is broadly distributed, even outside our solar system." End quote. In our number 8 spot today, we have a fossil graveyard. In July of this year, in the Cotswold region of the UK beneath a limestone quarry, researchers made a fascinating discovery. Paleontologists uncovered a huge fossil graveyard of squiggly, alien-like Jurassic-era creatures. Like. What? These fossils included tens of thousands of these marine invertebrates, and they were all preserved at different stages in their life cycle. Talk about a scientific jackpot. It appeared as though these creatures lived at a time when they were absolutely thriving, until something happened. It isn't clear exactly what this event was, but perhaps it was some sort of mudslide that was triggered by an earthquake, but either way, it ended up suffocating and entombing all of these creatures for 167 million years until they could be found by these paleontologists. I know these were clearly Earth creatures and not actually aliens, but these distant relatives of the creatures that currently exist on Earth truly do seem like aliens to us now. In our number 7 spot today, we have a fossil monster. These fossils pertaining to one particular creature have only been found in one spot, and that is in the Maison Creek fossil beds of Illinois. Here they have found the fossils of an animal called Tulamonstrum gregarium, or simply the Tully monster. This animal is said to have lived 300 hundred million years ago in the shallow waters that covered Illinois. What is so unique about these fossils from this creature, other than the fact that it lived 300 million years ago, which is wild, is that attempts at classifying this creature have been highly controversial. Interpretations of this fossil have been likened to mollusks, arthropods, conodonts, worms, and vertebrates. It is super weird that this creature with fossils located in only one place from 300 million years ago is super hard to classify because it has a bunch of different Tributes that could be placed in a number of different animal classes. I'm not saying it's an alien. I'm just saying it's a little mysterious. In our number 6 spot today, we have Curiosity. NASA's Curiosity rover is one of the rovers sent to Mars to explore the red planet we want to know so much about. Curiosity has taken photos that have been extremely helpful to the scientists here on Earth, but some of those photos are more intriguing than others when it comes to the search for alien life. One batch of these photos, when looked at by researcher Barry de Gregorio, piqued his interest. He explained that the objects in the photos looked extremely similar to the Ordovician trace fossils he had studied and 
photographed here on Earth. He went on to ask the question, if not trace fossils, what other geological explanations could NASA come up with? These stick-like features he is talking about were first spotted in black and white photos taken by Curiosity, and they were so interesting that they sent the rover back to take a second look. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll one day find life on Mars, or do you think it is hiding somewhere else in the universe? Let me know down below in the comments. Maybe we'll be the one to find aliens. In our number 5 spot today we have the Gale Crater. The Gale Crater on Mars has been the focus of study for a long time as it is believed that this crater once held water. Many scientists have speculated that this may be a location that did and possibly still could hold a watery environment conducive to life. Over 3,000 photographs taken by NASA's Curiosity rover were examined by a team of 14 experts in astrobiology, astrophysics, biophysics, geobiology, microbiology, algae, fungi, and fossils. This team published a controversial report which stated that they had found proof of life on Mars in these photos. Dr. Rudolf Schlid, who is said to be a Harvard Smithsonian astrophysicist, wrote, quote, We discovered Martian formations resembling metazoan fossils and observed hundreds of specimens which closely resemble algae and dimpled lichens attached to mudstones, end quote. The report that this team published has been controversial because of the fact that it was determined from photos rather than actual samples here on Earth, but at the end of the day, any kind of sign and any kind of possibility is rather exciting. Like I mentioned in the first one, hopefully the Perseverance rover will be able to head over to the Gale Crater and get a closer look at what is going on down there. Maybe we're closer to finding solid proof of alien life than we once thought. In our number 4 spot today we have these Canadian fossils. In Kootenay National Park in Canada in 2018, paleontologists discovered something incredible. This discovery was of course a fossil, and it was carapaces that had been molted onto a long gone ocean floor that once existed here on Earth. These carapaces belong to some sort of species that is entirely new to science. You see where I'm going with this? It is thought that these fossils came from the Cambrian period 540 million years ago. While it is unlikely these creatures were actually aliens, it seems almost alien that these completely unknown creatures once existed on our planet. And who knows, maybe it really is the fossil of an alien. I mean, I wasn't around 540 million years ago to tell you, so at this point, I'm not really sure. It is debated exactly how these creatures relate to animals we currently have living on this wonderful earth, which just adds to the mystery of this wonderful find. In our number 3 spot today we have lava tubes. As it turns out, lava tubes may just be where the alien life has been hiding all these years. Besides holding the keys to the answers of a planet's geological history, lava tubes may also host environmental conditions that are relatively stable, which is kind of shocking. This may mean that these lava tubes would be appealing to life forms of all sizes. If a planet like, let's say, Mars ever did host life at one point, it's entirely possible that these life forms may have moved and tried to find a safer place amongst the changing conditions and evolution of Mars. These life forms may have been seeking some kind of haven, and this is where the lava tubes come in. Pascal Lee, a planetary researcher at NASA's Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California, said, quote, On Mars and other places, lava tubes have the potential to have made the difference between life and death, end quote. Lava tubes, wherever they are found, are scientifically exotic, and it's been said that a mission to another world that also also studies these underground features as well as the surface of the planet is like getting two planets for the price of one. Maybe our issue all along is that we've been searching on the planet when we really should be looking at what's going on inside. In our number 2 spot today we have the Sri Lanka fossils. In 2012 scientists from the United Kingdom explained that they had found algae like fossils inside of meteorite fragments that landed in Sri Lanka. Not only could this potentially have been proof of the existence of alien life, but it also could give indications as to how life on this planet formed, as that truly is one of the mysteries we still don't really have answers to. There are a few theories as to how life began, and they include the theory that life spontaneously erupted from inorganic molecules somehow, that life came here on a comet or an asteroid, or that some sort of alien civilization directly sent an asteroid here that contained life. Although this last one is the least likely, it's the one I'm most hoping for. Anyway, this fossil discovery may be holding the keys to this mystery we've long awaited the answers to. In our number 1 spot 
about today we have the Australia fossils. 3.5 billion years ago, Earth wasn't exactly a great place to live. That is no shade to the beautiful planet we call home, it was just a different time. There were a lot of volcanic eruptions, not a lot of oxygen, and a pretty high chance of getting hit by an asteroid. Despite all of this and this extreme environment, something happened that allowed life to form and evolve here. This has led scientists to believe that surely this has also happened on other planets. Right? Fossils found in Australia, which were dated back 3.5 billion years ago, are the earliest direct evidence of life on Earth. This alone is crazy and exciting, but the research done on these fossils showed that not all of these fossilized organisms were the same. Some were primitive photosynthesizers, and others produced methane. This shows that not only was life forming at this time, but that it had an easy time doing so. Scientists can't be sure about how much earlier life could have been formed here, but if the conditions are right, it seems as though these fossils prove that it's not exactly difficult for it to happen, and that life in the universe should be pretty widespread. The organisms in the fossils probably wouldn't like life on Earth so much now, but it does show that life can form and thrive under conditions we would think of as unlivable. Mm -hmm.